you had to pick just a few things to leave behind in your investment in the leaders you develop, what would be those things? I'm gonna share some thoughts coming up. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Multiplying Disciples channel where we give you simple tips, tools, principles, and strategies to see a multiplication of disciples, churches, leaders, until there is no place left. So if that connects with you, you want more content like that, be sure to uh, hit the subscribe button, leave a like on this video, ring that notification bell so this ends up in your inbox. Hey, I've been thinking lately about leadership investment and leadership legacy. And, you know, we all want to leave a legacy and leaders are the way that Jesus defined this legacy in the upper room when he was with his disciples. He said, I've completed the work that you gave me to do, Father, in John 17. And so what is our legacy in the disciples that we not only pour into, but the leaders that we raise up to shoulder height, as it were, those that are coming alongside and, and at the, the same level that we are. What, what is it that we're looking for in those leaders? Well, you know, as I was thinking about it, here are the things that I want to be pressing down the gas pedal on every time I meet with my leaders so that as I'm leaving, these are the main things left for them. And that would be word and spirit, that they would be reliant on word and spirit, that they would be pointed to Jesus as the model, and that they would have a generational mentality. So that's four things, or three things, if you want to put the first two together. You know, I think it is so critical that leaders learn how to lean on word and spirit. So when they begin to hit challenges and problems, if they just are learning from other people's strategies or just applying what they hear or read in books, those are principles drawn from the Bible. And maybe a leader got that as they were in prayer and got that revelation and application in that situation. But you know, unless they are understanding where that comes from in the word and discerning how to hear the Holy Spirit's voice, they're not going to be able to follow what God is doing in their context. So a leader absolutely has got to be able to discern what is God saying through the word and through the spirit. So they've got to be constantly consuming the word of God in large chunks and in meditative specific small pieces, but also know how to hear God's voice in a, in a spirit led way, or they're going to go off track. So word and spirit, absolutely critical. Okay. So number three, Jesus, I think it is so helpful that, uh, one of my mentors, Chuck has, has put this out there and just hammered this and just keeps pressing on the gas pedal on this, this idea that, uh, our model is Jesus. And if we're talking about anything and anything's coming out of our mouth that doesn't first point to Jesus, we're missing it because Jesus came to be the model. He's the point of the story. He's the one we're bringing glory to. So all the things that we do should point back to Jesus and sh we should see Jesus as the main reference point for our strategy. So even when we're looking in the life of Paul and into the books of uh, the New Testament and then even missionary books from today, they should all point back to what we see in the life of Jesus. If it goes off of that, then who are we pointing to and who are we, uh, who are we actually modeling in our discipleship? So word, spirit, and Jesus are absolutely critical. And then finally, generations. And the reason for this is, you know, you see in the Great Commission that Jesus is calling us to make disciples of all nations. He even defined success, however, in this context of wanting to have this massive vision as discipling these leaders, like I'm talking about today. The, the, in John 17, he's saying, I, I completed the work given to me. And that was pouring deeply into a few. And he had a vision of generational multiplication. So if we're going to raise up leaders to shoulder height that are doing the works of Jesus today, they're going to be those that can hear the word of God rightly and discern where we are in the story and where they fit into this next part of the story. They're going to understand how to hear the Holy Spirit and see what God is doing in the earth. They're going to be pointing to Jesus and they're going to be looking like Jesus and pointing to Jesus as their strategy. They're going to point others to connect with Jesus. It's all about Jesus. And then finally, they're going to be thinking generationally. They're going to think generationally in the way that they disciple and the way that they plant churches and in in their methods and how they point to others. They're going to be thinking in a way that will multiply uh, whatever they do. So everything's going to multiply from micro to macro generationally. If all of those pieces are in place, 
I am a happy leadership developer because I believe that having those things in place, and thanks to Chuck for uh, teaching me about those, that, that those things in place are going to set that leader up to run the race and to do it in a way that's going to be healthy and reproducing the vision that Jesus had for his church and his kingdom. So hope that's helpful for you guys. If you've got something different that you would hope for in the outcome of your disciples, leave that in the comments below. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are. And uh, until next time. <laughs>